right, guys. Peoria Regional is this weekend, and I wanted to go over the five archetypes I think you should be considering going to this event. And outside of a crazy meta call, I think that these are all pretty safe bets. If you're someone that's looking to either get points or someone that's looking to get their first day two, it's all you know about setting goals and picking them. And so the first deck we're actually going to go over is Chen Pao. So I think Chen Pao is actually pretty solid going into this event. This is a pretty standard, just you know, turbo Chen Pao list with a four Pokey Stop in it, and you know it's got really strong plays with Cross Strike canceling Cologne. You have Chen Pao that just does unlimited damage. You have that added consistency of the barrel. Obviously, back Scalver lets you pretty much do whatever you want, right? That card is just a reprint of our old Blastoise. Let's smack up all those energy. I think this card is a pretty solid play into this event. It has a lot of power. It has a lot of speed. It's able to one-shot those big boys like Charizard, EX, Arceus V-Star, Garatina V-Star, Gardevoir EX, just all those big boys that are in the metagame currently. So I think this deck is in a solid spot this weekend. I think that this is a pretty big high roll deck, obviously. You do have to draw pretty well in order to advance in this tournament, but I think that this deck can definitely do it. And if you're looking for something that is going to definitely be able to complete three games, this is one of them going to regional setting. You should know, okay, well, can my deck actually finish three games? And Chan Pao is one of those decks that definitely can. It doesn't have a ton of decisions. You really are just going to shiver till the start of your turn. Maybe Pokey stop a barrel and then ear it up for those last combo pieces you're missing during that turn. So number five is going to be Chen Pao. Next, we're going to talk about Arvinzard. So now Arvinzard was popularized in Brazil, and this archetype is pretty good. So you have the Charizard that's going to just do a bunch of damage. You can pair that with the Pidgeot with the Quick Search ability to be able to tutor out whatever you need from your deck going into your turn. So it's going to be that glue that holds your deck together. So you're able to go, okay, well, if I'm playing against X deck, I want this combo piece. So let me search this, and then I can use my Arvin to also search another piece. So this deck can string together a lot of nice combos. Obviously, you have the Charizard to be able to do big damage. You have the Entei for, you know, early game. Maybe you just went Entei attach, and then turn two, you can just go, you know, rope attach, and then you get an attack off if you're not able to get up that Charizard. Helps you with some early game pressure. Obviously, of Radiant Charizard, one of my favorite attackers ever. Card is extremely efficient. Once your opponent's taken those four prizes, you're just going to slap one fire energy on it, and boom, it's going to be slapping for 250. You can pair that with Raihan to be able to even do it a turn earlier. And with Charizard, you could even do it turn two if you really wanted to. If you go attach, next turn attach, Charizard ability, donk something for 250. So this deck is incredibly powerful in that fact that it takes a good matchup into something like Gardevoir because you can do weakness to it. It's going to be able to do a ton of damage into other V-Star, V-Max archetypes. And Charizard's 330 HP. It's very hard to kill. And if your opponent's going to be using stuff like Grass Attackers to combat Charizard, then you have your own copy of Entei and Charizard, the Radiant one, to be able to combat those Grass Attackers. So we're actually going to be going over a second Charizard list. So this is Charizard Gallade. This was popularized in a Japanese tournament a few weeks ago. I know that a lot of people weren't very happy with the fact that they had to play a lot of um, this was popularized in a Japanese tournament a couple of weeks ago and a lot of people that played Charizard weren't happy in the fact that they had to put a bunch of two prize liabilities on their board i.e. the Pidgeot EX, Luminion, Entei so they went okay let's just play a bunch of one prizers then. Let's take out all those cards and add another consistency engine. So here we have Ralts, Curly, and Glade. This archetype is going to function similarly to this one, but in place of the Pidgeot, which is obviously an evolution Pokemon. So it takes a little time to get to it. It is a stage two. You do have the Ralts and the Curly and the Glade. Curly is going to give you that added consistency of refinement. And then the Glade's buddy catch ability says search your deck for supporter. So that card is going to be able to be your little mini Pidgeot and it's a combo piece so you can go, okay, well, this turn I really need a Gus. Okay, let me get Boss's Order. Oh man, this turn I really need an Iono. So let me reset my opponent's hand. So this deck is mainly going to be focusing around getting up Charizard quickly and then just spamming Iono so your opponent doesn't have a lot of options to be able to remove your Charizard. And then obviously you have the addition of the Radiant Charizard as well, just like the other version. And this Charizard is going to do a bunch of damage. 
And you also have Glade that's going to be able to attack with Swirling Slice. So the Reversal Energy is pretty useful in that deck for that as well. You able to just have a one prize that does 160 damage is pretty nice. And then your Glade's attack actually moves the Reversal Energy to one of your other Pokemon. So you can move the energy from one Glade to the other Glade. So then your other Glade can attack the following turn. So it actually is pretty nice because then if your opponent wants to boss and hit that Glade that's on the bench, then you're just going to be able to retaliate with one of these guys over here, something in the Charizard category. So I think this deck is really good too. I know a lot of my friends that I've been playtesting with recently have been really liking this deck. So it's pretty straightforward. It's very consistent. And that's something that you're going to want for a deck going into a regional event. And we're going to move on to number three. All right, number three, we're going to be looking at Single Strike Lugia. So Single Strike Lugia is one of the decks that gets a big buff with the Mew EX. So this card is going to help you draw a couple of extra cards when you aren't able to attach a gift energy to one of your Pokemon. Be able to draw those extra cards like if you get Judged or you get Roxanne or you get Ionode. This card also is really nice because it's a free retreater, which is really nice in this archetype because... You don't have anything that has free retreat, so a lot of the times if you want to pivot into another attacker, you're going to have to use your jet energy, and you're going to have to raw draw jet energy, which is kind of tough, but this is really nice because it allows you to just do that to be able to conserve energy. So free retreater, it's able to copy stuff like Greninja, or Giratina V-Star, or just opposing T-Tar in the mirror, or whatever you really need it to do. It's a very versatile card. Obviously, Lugia is a powerhouse. It's been a top tier deck ever since it came out. The nice thing about this version is that you're going to be able to have just the nice consistent bulky attacker in Lugia V-Star. And then you're going to have the Tyranitar V, which is a dark type attacker. Very versatile card. You can use it to mill your opponent out cards. Or you can just use it for the single strike crush to be able to get a giant smack off on your opponent. Stonejourner is also really good into the upcoming meta. You can use Stonejourner, two Stonejourners to two-shot Charizard late game, which is a matchup this deck struggles with. And then it's really good into something like Maridon because you have two of them. So it's going to trade very favorably for you. It's also good into Gardevoir because you can use your one prizers to kind of trade during the mid game, which is nice because then you can kind of put up a T-Tar and go like Iono, Kragalanch, and you know, knock out a Shining Arcana and hope you can get rid of some of those recovery cards or other key cards your opponent needs to keep you know combating your own Tyranitar. This R-Type's lacks a little bit of consistency compared to this next one we're going to show you but what it makes up for in that is the power level the power level of this deck is absolutely incredible probably one of the highest in the game and then we're going to look at the colorless version of lukia so this version like i said is going to be a little bit more consistent than the other version we were looking at but it's going to be a little bit less powerful but you can kind of combat that with cards like word ear and radiant charizard which i didn't have in my list to begin with but Definitely after playing a bunch of games with this deck, I really like the addition of Radiant Zard. It lets you have that really nice 1 energy 250, which is a really nice number to hit in the current metagame. It knocks out a lot of threats, and most of the things that you would two-shot, this can really clean those guys up. And then randomly, if your opponent has a Grass-type Pokemon, it's, it's nice to have a, a type that's not normal, because obviously normal doesn't have anything for super effective. So looking at this list, we have the Dunsparce, which is something that I was really liking in playtesting. It's really good against Maridon, so you don't get donked by Raikou turn one. It's really good against Lost Box, because you don't get bonked by Raikou, which is really nice. Or the new Thunderous has been picking up steam lately, so helps you be a little bit more resilient to those guys. And also, you don't know how many times I've played against someone, they've had an electric deck, they've gone boss up Dunsparce, knock it out, and they're like, well, this Lugia is going to get bodied next turn, you lose. And then I go, Summoning Star, Archeops, Dunsparce, and then you Dunsparce is there again. Archeops sets up your Lugia, and you're chilling from there. Because chances they have another boss, hey, they're just they're just better than me. If not, if it's Lugia, we're going to ride it to the sunset and win the game. This version has, obviously, Snorlax, which is really good against something like Lost Box, but it's... Definitely can struggle because you don't have a lot of Pokemon that have high damage output. So you have the word here is the one time nuke button. Other than that, you're not really looking to one shot a lot of things. Obviously, Lugia can one shot, you know, basic V Pokemon that are 220 or less. Snorlax is going to clean up those guys that are a little bit under that. You know, the opposing Snorlaxes of the world, the Cramorants, basically like the little guys in Shining Arcana Gardevoir. 
and this deck can cram a couple of extra consistency cards so the, as this version to the other one has a couple more draw supporters has an extra squawk ability thrown in there and a couple of more energy cards so it's going to be a little bit harder to not do anything while playing this deck so i've liked this deck a lot in play testing and let's move on to the number two well if you've been playing pokemon for any amount of time you could probably guess what the number two variant is and here we're looking at gardevoir ex so gardevoir ex also gets the addition of mew and the nice thing about gardevoir is that it can power up mew basically for free again it's another pivot for the deck which isn't really a problem for this deck because you have the gardevoir ability to attach a bunch of energy but mew ex offers this deck something that it didn't have before which is the ability to potentially take multiple prizes in one turn on multiple pokemon obviously if this deck cannot get a two prize it takes two prizes but now you can use the mew to copy things like radiant greninja against lost box that are just kind of benching you willy-nilly or you can use it against something like charizard as you know a way to clean up the game for not as many energy if you're you know prize an energy or two you can use the genome hacking attack to copy charizard knock that bad boy out when your opponent has one prize card remaining which usually you know Gardevoir is a pretty good matchup spread across the board. It's good into things like Maridon. It's good into things like Charizard. You know, it takes like an iffy lost box matchup, but I think that matchup has gotten, gotten more even over time as people have gotten really, really good with Gardevoir. And then I guess in a Chen Pao, as long as they don't cross your canceling clone you, like you're fine, I guess. Lugia is a pretty good matchup, which is nice. Even the colorless version, even more so than the single strike version. Obviously, the single strike version has Tyranitar which Tyranitar can definitely be scary for this deck. And what can be said about Gardevoir that hasn't been said already? You have really good consistency with the Refinement Curlia, Iona for Hand Disruption, your Shining Arcana draws you cards, Zacian's a Nuke Button, use a great consistency card, Cresselia cleans up damage counters on your board, this deck's able to fit the text that it needs to, because it's so consistent you're always going to see them. By turn you know, 4 or 5, you're going to have no cards left in your deck, so... Who even who needs cards man you're just gonna have your whole deck in your hand and you're gonna win gardevoir is always a safe play in any event i think this is probably pound for pound the best deck in the game just because it's so consistent but i'm a little biased so we're gonna move over to number one all right so let's talk about the two lost box decks that i would consider going to this event obviously i'm a lost box guy i played it for neic i played it for worlds i played it for pittsburgh um, I played Tina for two of those events, and I played Kyogre for the first one that I named. Uh, this is Tina looking into the deck, going into the event. I think this deck is in an amazing spot. There's a little Chen Pao hype right now. So this deck does pretty well into Chen Pao, just Lost Box naturally does anyway. And then Giratina just being able to blow up, you know, Chen Pao, Arceus, Palkia, V-Star, then... Having the Star Wrecking Room to just blow up anything is really nice because things like Gudra are getting hype right now. Gudra is a very hard Pokemon to kill, but with the combination of Lost Impact and Star Requiem, that matchup is pretty good. And then this deck's also good in every Arceus variant there is. If there's people out there still playing Arceus decks, which who knows, you know, there's always the guy or two that's playing Arceus and does well. So if you run into those guys, you can definitely ruin their day with the big bad Tina. This deck takes a really good matchup into Gardevoir. Obviously, the one downfall of this deck is that your Lugia matchup is pretty subpar. So when you have things like Spiritomb, Path to the Peak, and Temple of Sinnoh to be able to help combat that, it's not as bad, but the matchup still isn't very good. I think Colorless is a little bit more doable because they have a hard time knocking out Giratina V-Star in one hit. And you can kind of clean up their guys a little bit easier. But I think this deck's a great call to the event. I have one friend who is very big on this deck and he said well hey man if i don't know what i want to play i'm gonna just load up tina and hope for the best and he has some success with this before so who knows i might fall in his footsteps but i think there's one more deck that i would potentially play over this one and it's actually going to be turbo lost zone so turbo lost zone takes a good matchup into charizard because you're able to snipe all the little guys. If you're really scared of Charizard, you can play a Grass Attacker. You can play like Tropius with the Glasses, or you can play Shaman EX. Those are all good choices. With this new Thunderous that was, oh, it's not new, it's in Paldea, but now people are trying to starting to pick up on it. It does 140 damage, which is a really nice damage threshold for this deck, because it's one less energy than Snorlax, 
but it kind of fulfills the same purpose, right? So Gigantic Bolt's going to be able to knock out stuff like Stone Journer. It's able to knock out Opposing Cramorant. It's able to knock out pretty much all the stage ones in the game that aren't Roblox Pokemon. So it's really good. It also comes with a nice ability that says your opponent can't do damage to your bench Pokemon when it's in the active. So, you know, it's a little bit more protection against, you know, stuff like Radiant Greninja or you know, Rapid Strike Urshifu if you uh, end up playing against that guy. But Turbo is really nice going to this event. You know, you get games where you your opponent goes Pokemon pass, you cram knock them out. Or if you draw really well, you can Dragonite knock them out. So you get, you know, really big turn one swings, which is nice. This deck has the tools to kind of beat everything. I think most time you kind of just lose to yourself, just kind of drawing bad. But I think this deck takes a good matchup into Guardi, good matchup into Tina. Okay matchup into Lugia. It's really die roll dependent. If you win the die roll, you're able to like knock out a Lugia turn one. Your, your turn two, obviously, you know, your opponent goes, sets up, and then you're able to knock out any two prizer. It looks really good from there. Um, the grass type attacker also might help in that matchup, so you might want to just toss in the grass attacker the more that I'm, you know, thinking about it. Uh, what else? Obviously, take a good Chen Pao matchup, but you're naturally good in a Chen Pao. Uh, you're naturally good in a Maridon. You are pretty solid into most decks going into the event. I think that Ogre could also be a good call to, you know, help you improve your Lugia matchup and, you know, stuff like Maridon makes it a lot, right on a lot easier. So, Obviously, you know, the last archetype is Lost Box, so those are the five archetypes that I would consider going into this event. If you're looking for something kind of off the beaten path, you know, there's also stuff like Arc Keys, there's Maridon, there's, you know, Arceus Dura Vulpix, which I saw was getting some hype on Twitter, um, Gudra even, but I kind of fall under like the Lost Zone umbrella, so... Yeah, I think that's what I would end up going with if I wasn't playing what I'm playing for the regional. But you guys will see what I played at the regional probably in two videos. So there's going to be this video that's going to go up today, Thursday, the 5th. And then, oh, my birthday's in three months. That's cool. Uh, for today. Anyway, so this video is going to go up today. And then I have the greatest UPC I've I'll ever probably see probably the best seal product thing I've ever opened in my life. That one's going to go up tomorrow, Friday. And then the Pittsburgh vlog is probably going to go up Monday or Tuesday. So keep an eye out for that. And I will catch y'all later. Peace out.